going to do a couple of short poems. This uh, first one's about a guy that I really hate. Uh, I find him really annoying. Um, it's the continuity announcer on BBC Two. I think most people probably hate him. I, I hate that he talks over the end credits. And I hate that when it's a comedy programme, he tries to be funny as well. Like he, I think he thinks he's going to get a cult following and be on Nevermind the Buzzcock soon. Um, but this is a poem about the main reason that I hate him. Uh, it's called The Continuity Announcer Stole My Wife. <laughs> we were on our second bottle of wine when you went all quiet and said I've been cheating on you. Just then the doorbell rang. It was our takeaway, but neither of us were hungry anymore. The man kept ringing the bell. He must have seen we were in, but this was no time for Charmaine. Is it with someone I know? I asked. Sort of, you said. You know the man who says, and now the snooker, and next on BBC Two, eggheads. It's him. He said that it had been going on for about six months, and I thought about all the times we'd been on a settee waiting for Masterchef to start, and you didn't even flinch. I hadn't suspected a thing. I know you went away with work sometimes, but then so did I, and I still feel guilty about the time I drank everything in the minibar and then phoned up a chat line, but all the time you were shacking the BBC Two continuity announcer. I bet when he said, and now it's later with Jules Holland, he was thinking about your tits. <laughs> Not the bloke on Dave, my friend asked when I told him. BBC Two, I said, and he nodded. I think he was impressed. <laughs> does he have to wear a suit when he does his announcing, he asked, or can he just wear something comfy like a jumper? Does he sit in a room by himself all day with a TV and a microphone? Can he say what he wants or does he have to follow a script? There were so many questions that I didn't have an answer to. We didn't even eat our takeaway, we just put the white plastic bag in the bin and you went upstairs and packed your bags and left and I kept thinking that you would come back but you never did do and the other day I saw one of your friends in town and she told me how happy you are with the BBC Two continuity announcer. I still don't even know what he looks like. Thank you. And because this is a Al Sixteen's Glastonbury uh, festival special, I thought I would do, like, it's pretty much the first poem that I ever wrote. Um, and it's about Glastonbury. Um, I wrote it when I was about 20. And that doesn't make me a child prodigy, but... Like, <laughs> I was only 20 when I wrote this, and, and it kind of rhymes. <laughs> this is called The Girl at Glastonbury. I spent the day covered in mud, trying to find some firewood. I missed all my favourite bands, sorting out the night I had planned, and now I want to know why you left me high and dry. How could you resist that 2am air, my dirty face and unwashed hair? And after I'd given you all of my rum and coke and told you some of my favourite jokes, it makes me wish I hadn't bought all those bottles of Carlsberg Exports and all those cans of special brew. I bought them especially for you. <laughs> but I knew that you would disappoint the look you gave me when I rolled up a joint and you told me I was thick because I drank loads of cider and then I was sick. It was the way you took offence because I went for a wee against the fence. <laughs> But was it really so appalling trying to get you under my tarpauling? I'd been so intent on getting you into my tent, but when I came back from the burger van, you were sat talking to some other man, and my feelings had to stay concealed in that muddy Glastonbury field. Thank you very much.